Hey guys, Zach here with Veteran Construction. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be breaking down exactly how I would shingle this roof if it was my first time, but using all the knowledge that I have now. By doing this, I'm really kind of hoping to give you guys a basic formula for how to get these roofing projects done without wasting a bunch of time. As I mentioned in parts one and two, I'm very worried I might have given you guys a false sense of confidence when it comes to roofing, mainly because I make it look easy and at times even fun. But for the ones who have tried, I'm sure they've realized that it's not always the case. And let me remind you that tearing a roof off can be a very brutal process. The metal work can be tedious. Ice and water shield can ruin your day. Felt needs a lot of cap nails and shingling can be way harder than it looks. I bring this to you so I can sleep better at night. I really don't want anybody caught in a bind because I halfway detailed something. So brings me to my next point. If anything is unclear for you guys, or maybe I did something different than you were taught, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be happy to clear things up. You can see in my previous videos that I respond to nearly 100% of the comments and especially the ones that have questions. The only thing I ask in return is that you guys take that little like button. It's probably like a clearish type of color right now. Turn that blue for me. This helps the channel out tremendously and it encourages me to stay engaged with my subscribers. So let's get to the video. Welcome to part three. In this final part to the series, I detail nail placement, creating your stair step, how to finish your cuts on the end rake, and everything in between. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the comment section. Okay, next step, start putting on some shingles. But first, you can't put on shingles without knowing how to nail them. So a little bit about this shingle. This is a laminate shingle, it means it's two parts. This part right here is all one part of the shingle. However, this part down here is actually laminated on. Those are laminated on using tar, some sort. So really, you only have about this much distance, as you can see, between right here and right here, it's about one inch for your nail to go. Now these are Owens Corning strips, so technically my nail could be up here and it count, but our goal should be to be right in that little sweet spot in the gray, in the gray strip. Now this is gonna make the shingle much stronger. It's gonna be secured to the roof a lot better when it's secured through that double thick part, which we call a common bond. So that's really all you gotta think about when nailing aside from uh, some other things like you don't want to nail where a seam is going to go we're going to be staggering our pieces about seven inches or so which means we don't want to nail right here so we don't, we don't want to just start shooting nails right off the bat you want to put one nail one inch away from the end and then skip over just a little bit past that about a foot in and then start nailing it okay you don't necessarily want to shoot one on the end and then skip all the way to half the shingle and then only shoot half the shingle on really good. You just want to skip over just a little bit, okay? Because like I said, when you butt two shingles together, water does get in this groove still and it will work its way sideways. So you just don't want to nail close to it. Now, for nailing pattern, you have four nail, uh, five nail, and six nail. Five nail isn't like an official nail pattern. I do five nails specifically because my area calls for four and I just prefer to do five, okay? So for four nails, one on the end, skip over, one, two in the middle shingle, evenly spaced, and then one, one inch from the end. For five nail, one, one nail, one inch from the end, skip over, one, two, three, skip one. And then for six nail, one inch from the end, one, two, three, four. Skip over a little bit. One inch from the end. So if you measure these shingles, they're pretty close to 40 inches, 39 and some change, right? So the minimum stair step that you can have, I believe is five and five eighths. For me, that's a little too close. That may help some people create their stair step a little bit quicker, but for me, that causes issues with the end. And if you have to go around pipes and things like that, it's not fun because then you have to be super precise when you're trying to continue your stair steps. So your goal should be between seven and eight inches. So somewhere in there. All right. 
Now, what this is going to do, when I cut this like this, I'll go closer to eight. All right. We're going to come through that and we're lifting up when we cut upwards in the air. When it's colder out, they'll snap. That's one. Okay. Now we've got our next one. We need to do the same thing. Our knife plus about an inch and a half or so. All right. These don't need to be exact. There is no reason at all to hang this over the edge and try to cut backwards because you're worried about a seam or a factory edge out here. It doesn't matter because let me show you why. If I, our stair step is now made out of three shingles total. So we have one full one. Then we have one with our seven and a half, eight inches off. Then we have one with about 15, 16 inches off. Now you can see these are cuts that I made, but now the cuts go on the outside anyway, and you have your factory here. So really what's the difference? There's really no difference at all. It's totally allowed, okay? Now when you do it this way, you're going to be able to use your scrap. I only made two cuts and I have five stair steps now. So it's gonna be quick and efficient for you. And these cuts are nice and big. So like I said, if you ever have to continue a stair step around pipes and things like that, it's gonna be super simple. All right. So let's go ahead and install these. Got our first one. We're flushing it up to the starter. And remember our nail, nail, nail pattern. Now you don't wanna go one inch from the end on your first piece because you'll shoot out of that edge on that drip edge, like I said. So we left our nail space for our seam there. We can grab our next one. Now we need to be watching for crooked nails. That nail's not necessarily crooked, it just had a little flare on its edge. The nail was sunk correctly though. All right, now we're going to do the same thing here. The straighter the cut, the better. So take your time. Make sure you're cutting your stuff straight. Oh, that's upside down. But uh, also, I was thinking of something else in my head. Sometimes I put two nails over on this side, on that second to last shingle, just to kind of help. And then a lot of times I'll three nail that. And you could put your nail here. A lot of people do that. I don't really care for it, but you can. Now, I'm a new shingler and this is scary. Nailing on the bottom, right? It's uncomfortable. So if we're gonna do it, let's get, let's get good at it and get it all out of the way at one time. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put on four shingles. Like I said, we're gonna want to set up, we're gonna wanna set up our uh, shingles nice and close. So why not just spread this out here? And let's work our way all the way across. I recommend not opening up more than one bundle at a time just because a lot of times it'll be hot and you'll suffer that. Watch yourself behind you. You don't wanna walk off an edge. Now 
I normally only do two, but if you put four rows across the bottom, you're going to be much more comfortable. side because this is easy for me. I can get a rhythm going. Without ever feeling like I'm in any danger of the edge. So if you don't know where I'm lining up, again, I'm lining up to this ridge here. A little ridge line. I'm not lining up to the gray tape or anything. We're lining up right to that ridge. As we nail, we're worrying about our spacing, right? We want to be skipping over our space where this seam is going to come in. And we're also watching for crooked nails. We're watching for overdriven nails and underdriven nails. So be on the watch for those as you're shingling. All right, now like I said, we're just gonna go ahead and kill off that one little section on the bottom there. So I'm gonna cut this open, bring a few more over there. Get it really close to being done on this side. Sometimes if you give this a little flap, it'll open up those edges, make it a little easier to separate. driven nails or underdriven nails usually on most guns they have a little knob here that will adjust uh, the depth if that's not good enough maybe it's real hot out or real cold out um, you can always go to the compressor and turn the uh, pressure up or down whichever after these four because I'm a new shingler I'm scared of that corner I don't know what to do with it yet and I don't want to mess with it let's go do the stuff that's easy over there it's intimidating over here in this corner Shingles close to me because I know I'm going to need some soon, as well as a coil because I might want a patch. Now, we finished our stair step before we have our short piece on. It's time to start our stair step again. We also have something else to worry about here. We've got our first line snapped. So now we're going to drop this down to our first line. All right? So you can see. By doing that uh, 28 instead of 28 and a quarter, or 28 and an eighth, I actually dropped about a quarter of an inch on this row, okay? That's because I, I tend to, as I shingle, show a little bit of that ridge under here. If you don't show as much, it won't be as significant as mine was, okay? So now we have to cut 
we know we're on our straight line and now we have to cut this right so we'll go knife plus about two inches and we're gonna go ahead and strike that okay and then let's do our second one while we're right here Get them decently straight before we do it. And again, we're trying to cut as straight as possible here. Don't cut nothing below it. So now we've got, we've only made two cuts. And now we've got a good handful of shingles to put on, five of them. Now we've got our two scrap cutoffs. We're going to put these on. Again, you don't want these overhanging the edge. You actually want to leave that line showing a little. You see how I've left a little bit of that starter edge showing? The reason being, you don't want a little bit overhanging because when you look up you're gonna see that from the ground so it's better to be shy of it it's not gonna cause any leak or anything if you just stay just short of that all right so now we're rocking and rolling we've got a nice safe place to stand on the bottom and we know how we're making our stair steps that's most of the battle right there so I'm gonna run this out show you guys a little bit about where to stick these bundles On. So, again, give that a little flap, it'll make them come apart easier. Roll these up so they don't blow around into your neighbor's yard. Set this however is comfortable for you. You can set it like that, how I just did it. Or you can set this down. You're going to need to set it down regardless. To stay on your line here. Here, show them that. You see how much that's dropping. So every fifth row, we're gonna drop about three eighths of an inch or so. If I if I lower my reveal like that, rather than where I normally do it, it'll be a less severe of a drop. But again, I took a little off that number, knowing that it was gonna do that. Just to correct any imperfections that you might have in your roof. Your shingles as you install them, okay? Passed up my line. Yikes. This is why you should snap lines with a uh, real dark red. This pink blends in super good on that. We have black as well. Oh, that would have been nice. It was a four. Yeah. It's fine, I'll just rip these three shingles up. significantly less. Let's drop the shingle we can use on the other side. Now this is something else that's going to save you guys time too. Lifting an entire bundle all at once. Bringing it onto your shingles and gently setting it down. 
All right, you don't want to just uh, bring bring half of this, okay? Because then you're gonna have to keep walking for it. You don't want to do that. Also, if you pay attention to which direction you're putting them, it'll help as well. Whenever I put them vertical like this, I always put them with the reveal facing this way. It makes it easier for me to get it in position. All right, now we gotta cut our two shingles. See how that piece is hanging out right there? That would show ugly from the bottom. So you just take your knife, Tear that a little bit off. Good. After this, just grab some shingles, throw them this way. Always put them with the reveal side down. That's going to make it easier for you to get them into, the, into position. So. Now we're cooking with Cresco because we got our nice four rows to stand on and we got our line to keep us straight, stair step going. Now we got our line here. It actually works out because I make five shingles as my stair step. Every time I put the full shingle on is the one that I got to set to the line. So that's actually that's actually helping me not forget now since I did forget once to put it on the line. This one's a little tight. I was getting ahead of myself, so I need to adjust this cut. But that's the beauty of making such big stair steps. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, room for error. Okay. If you ever have to do that, you need to make sure you're not cutting below into that shingle. I didn't even nick that shingle below. So if you have to do that, be very, very careful. All right. So when I grab these bundles, I feel for the reveal, okay? That helps me 
know which side to drop. It also helps to have a dual blade knife, one to open, straight blade to open, and then a uh, hook blade to single. Hook blades are kind of a pain to open the thing with. It also helps you to have a hook blade and a straight blade on you when drying in. Because as I said, it does help to have the uh, ice shield getting cut with a hook blade and the felt getting cut with a straight blade. Also, I'm not going to waste my time dragging that bundle down to the bottom. I would rather just drag a bundle straight into place and have that one up there when I'm ready for it. When I spread this, I'm going to leave, leave some. Leave some. Drop down here, show you what to do with this rake. Just a hair shy of the edge. I'm gonna mark where they meet. I'm gonna score it. That's gonna be my first one. Now the reason I have to do my first one like this so that I can see my edge, and this is gonna play a part in the trick that I'm gonna show you here. We could just square that up, blast it on, do the same thing with a few more shingles. See how I'm working from the top now. 
Because we're scared of that edge. No, I'm just kidding. We should at least be careful around that edge, though. Okay. Now, before we get too far, we're going to want to cut these. Now, again, we can use this as a straight edge. And I turn the shingle upside down, one, because you don't want the tar. You don't want to be in the habit of having that tar side down because you're going to put pressure on this and on hot days it's going to stick to your shingles and it's going to scar them along that edge or even if you want to try it this way it'll scar them out here so you have to do it upside down um i prefer to use the thin side here but there is still another perk to putting it upside down and that's when you slip off of this cut it's harder to cut into this edge than it is this this is more grippy for some reason it doesn't grip as much when it's upside down so what i do is I'll stay just about an eighth inch away from the edge. Okay, get some weight on this thing, get comfortable. And you want to be looking at it so that you're cutting sideways across, like across your face underneath it. All right. So we're going to hold some pressure here to lift it up. That way we don't cut through the starter. We're going to cut right along that edge. Okay. We can save that in case we need it. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cut. This is gonna really help you get a straight rake. I do not recommend you doing it any other way. I really don't. Not only is this going to be very fast for you, it's easy to do. It's pretty dummy proof. You don't have to. You don't have to think too hard about it. People, people try to do like snap lines or something. You're only gonna hurt yourself. That's going to give you a very clean, straight rake edge, and it's super simple. This was the hardest cut that you're going to have to make on the entire thing because it's close to the bottom. So if you wanted, rather than putting that second shingle overhanging, you could have cut that second or third or even the fourth shingle all to fit, and then that way you didn't have to do this this close to the bottom. Then you could have just started that on your next row when you're out of or when you're back into the comfort zone. Right, that comfort zone's about four shingles and up. So, now we've got another problem. Look how short that lands. It's just barely two and a half inches short. All right, so I can't shoot the shingle off. Cannot do it. What you actually have to do is you have to cut about a one footer. Now this is where that nail pattern comes in handy when you're, uh, not putting nails right here this is the only time on a regular roof like this that you're going to want to that you're going to want to do this you want to watch your nailing on this shingle and on this shingle and i'll show you why we've got to cut a shingle about this long okay we've got to install that right here I always put three nails in this, evenly spaced. Now this next one, we can just put it on and let it overhang, okay? There's no problem here. We can just let that overhang, but we need to watch our nailing. So, let me show you how you can do that. You can always just take a shingle and put it up. Now we know exactly where that seam is. Our seams are messed up now because we had to add a piece in here that was never here before. So that throws off our nail pattern. All right, now we know that there's gonna be a seam here so we can put nails like that, okay? Now that's an awkward nailing pattern that you're not gonna have to do on any other shingle besides this one when you have a piece laying just short of the rake, okay? So that's gonna be that whole process right there. It's not, it's not very hard. So that's all that's in it. Now we just go back on our own. So that's another reason I like these big stair steps. We don't spend all day in a corner. We get to do a couple cuts, a couple installs. We're back onto this, this gravy run, which is where we're gonna, we're gonna make up speed when we get to do that. So we get to take on these runs. Now you could, if you wanted, spread shingles and stay in this corner for a little bit, but better off 
taking this run. That way you get to do something nice and consistent. So, quick tip for nailing, turn your gun this way as you nail. Don't go like this because you have a wobbly wrist. You'll stay a lot straighter and a lot firmer with your wrist this way versus this way. Because it's, like I said, it's a little more flimsy that way. This way, there's really nothing it can do. So, that's the key to nailing straight and accurate is as you're going along, Turn that gun. I got lucky and landed where the nail strip is uh, right in line with the top. But if it landed something like this, you would be nailing down on the reveal. Just keep in mind, you got it, you got six inches or so of uh, ridge cap, so only nail in like that top two and a half, three inches. That way the ridge cap covers up those nails. You'll see what I'm talking about as we get along here. These two, these two scraps can now be used down there to uh, finish my end ring. five times and I'll show you why. I've got two shingles down. There's three. Here's four. Here's five. Remember we want to watch our nail pattern on this one. We don't want to nail in this area because we're going to have to add that one footer when the next one comes short.
okay? That's five. And here's the reason why we can comfortably do five up there. You can get away with more if you know a trick. I'm not gonna waste time showing it to you, but it's because that's the length of the shingle that we're using as a straight edge. All right, so get your five. Now, now that we're not at that bottom, we could actually, I could stay standing up if I want. Sometimes I do. I've been doing a lot of back breaking stuff today, so I was gonna sit down, but. And it does help if you take a knee. One's garbage. This one will keep. This one's garbage. This one's garbage. Now we want to keep this one. Keep the ones up here that are big enough to work. how nice and straight that is super quick for first timers you're not gonna have to battle now so now we've got a one footer actually already here from some other piece so we can just shoot that on remember you can shoot it three times however I need another coil I got it right here When you shoot this on, this is going to be the case every single time that your shingle runs short. It doesn't matter if you're short by this much or short by this much. It's going to be the same exact thing. So we're going to grab this shingle and then we need to have another full shingle right here to show us where our seam is going to go, right? So we're, we're getting up on here we know our seam is right here. So I can go here. Now you see, we don't have a seam or a nail too close to our seam. That is, that is a dangerous leak. It's a very hard one to find and it will happen very likely, I should say, very likely to happen over time. Okay. And now look, we got our nice big gravy run. We're going to take it going to be key to finishing is taking this run. Essentially, you guys already know how to finish this roof. Pretty much know all you need to know. much scrap as we can down here that way we don't waste shingles save some get a little bit of money back This is our fifth. 
remember we got to watch our nailing right here we're gonna have a seam landing right in this area all right depending on how big yeah see that doesn't reach over our thing enough so I got to cut cut a new one put it on there get it going somewhere in here and don't worry about the fact that it's almost stacking us almost stacking another seam you can get in trouble if you stack a whole roof like that you don't want to do that with these architectural shingles these laminated ones that's a big no-go all right but if you do it once randomly right five random times maybe you're gonna be okay that'll never be the cause of your problems on a roof as long as you watch your nailing you don't have those surprise nails in there okay so three nails wherever get these out of the way get this one up and nail where our seam is not going to be always bring this shingle in to double check yourself okay now we're going now we're now we're good. Right. right back to normal. Oh, I put on six there. I forgot to cut. Well, that's cool. I can show you guys the trick right now. So, what you do is you just eyeball this. You lift this shingle as you go along. You can see the starter. Okay? So just cut super straight with that starter. Now, you have a place to line up your shingle. That's really all you got to do. I still, even though I know that trick, I still stick to doing five. All right, don't forget to give yourself a little bit so that it don't stick over your starter. If it's colder out, definitely want to replace your hook blade right before you do this side or at least partially through it I me mean, I'm just fighting it it's harder to cut the shingles in the cold it's pretty warm today but definitely more cold than anything What a beautiful rake. All right. Now, let's take that run. We want to get that run done. Remember, got to watch our nailing here.
is the one we gotta watch our nailing on. That's big enough. Close to six inches. bigger the better on these okay because if water does get in there and it pushes its way over right about here and up is where it can get in and get behind all right so that's that's pushing it all right Gotta be careful on. near perfect rake. All right, I'm gonna get a few of these shingles off of here so we can show you guys just exactly how it turns out. Even with using all my scrap, look how much is left. The side landed real bad. But those can all get used on the opposite side. Plus, between that and that down there, that's less than like a quarter bundle scrap on a whole side, so that's not bad at all. So let's just show you from here how it looks. Snapping those lines was key. We didn't have to do any thinking once we went ahead and started shingling. Usually you see a pretty bad frown or a smile towards the end. You got none of that going on here.
All right, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Appreciate it.